I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay. What is up guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. Hi, it's Keisha, nice to meet you all. Get in here because we've got quite a bit to discuss. So in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about Dan Schneider as he is finally, after years and years and years of, in my opinion, committing criminal activity and just basically being one of the monsters in Hollywood, um, he's finally gone on to set the record straight that he is this and he's not that and he's this and he wants to take accountability and he wants to, you know, apologize. He really gets on into it. So I thought we would go ahead and just talk more about that he actually sat down to do a podcast with um do you guys know tebow from iCarly the black guy that works in a smoothie store um he had the locks you know you, you can't miss it he now has a podcast for what reason i don't know maybe it's a good podcast maybe i should give him a chance there's a whole bunch of maybes i'm not going to am i um yeah so it seems like everyone and their cousin, uncle, even dog has a podcast at this point. And I'm just like, for why? There's something about a man with a microphone that absolutely traumatizes me and scares me. Um, but you know what? I probably shouldn't say that because, you know, the whole equality thing and, you know, yeah. So he sat down with Dan Schneider as he wanted to find out a bit and wanted to really put on his um, journalist suit, even though he wasn't wearing a suit. But you get my point. I had a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program and I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay, I'm okay. There is currently a documentary taking place which is called Quiet On Set. It talks about like the darkness that the kids specifically on Nickelodeon had to deal with. And this is not breaking news. We've been reporting on this, I think back in 2019, 2020. So many commentators here on YouTube gave their thoughts and opinions and they really did expose the monster that is Dan Schneider. There's plenty of videos that live out there of Dan Schneider acting inappropriately and just co-signing a lot of weirdness and chaos and i feel like he was a very super he was a very very popular guy um in the early 2000s and even the 2010s and you know he did come out with some really great shows like keenan and kel victorious iCarly, the amanda show and i'm sure there's a few more others as well so he definitely is a successful guy he's somebody who has you know despite his departure from nickelodeon has gone on to you know live on his millions and is very comfortable and doing very well for himself but i guess you I, I guess now because there's so much attention thrown at him a lot of people pointing a finger at him he's ready to finally you know speak his mind for me i don't feel like that's genuine the fact that you have to wait until people are basically calling you to speak out and a group of powerful people are calling you and networks are calling you there's something very fishy about that i don't like this one of that babes do you because i know i don't um also i'm hiding my hair underneath this hoodie you can probably see it but i basically did the big chop um i cut my hair because it was absolutely heat damaged and i don't even want to talk about it because i'm actually really mad like seeing hair drop to the ground it's not a it's not no that crime scene was mad like i literally just went i was gonna say that i went snip 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 but baby it was very much chop 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 so my hair is very short it's giving very much betty boop but without the boop <laughs> i don't know if i like my hair yet so you guys are not gonna see it until you're probably not gonna ever see it to be honest even though you can only see enough about me um yeah let me know your thoughts and opinions down below we're gonna go ahead and talk about quiet on set and a few things they revealed over on there before we go ahead and talk about a few things dan schneider had to say on the podcast with tebow dan schneider looks an absolute mess by the way um i believe he's in his 50s he he just i don't know he, he did lose weight to be fair um but he just yeah he can't dress i wish that was breaking news i feel like a lot of really successful people just can't dress specifically men and it's like girl i ain't got time for that they ain't got time for that so, I mean, it is what it is, you know? I feel like a lot of the richest people, like, have the ugliest dress sense. Have you guys seen Sam and Cow's outfits? So, this article here, which I'll link down below for you guys if you're interested, it says, The biggest revelations from Quiet On Set, the dark side of kids' TV. Quiet On Set, the dark side of kids' TV, a new four-part docuseries that began airing on the 17th of March, has revealed alleged sexual abuse, harassment, racism, and gender discrimination behind the scenes of several popular 90s and early 2000s teen shows in the U.S. The claims center around an alleged toxic and harmful work environment on popular Nickelodeon teen and coming of age television show helmed by Dan Schneider, including iCarly, The Amanda Show, Zoe 101, Drake and Josh, Sam and Kat, um, which helped launch the careers of actors such as Drake Bell, Amanda Bynes, Miranda Cosgrove, and Jeanette McCurdy. Among those appearing in the series is former Drake and Josh star, Belle, um, now who's 37 years old who opened up for the first time about the abuse he, he suffered as a minor at the hands of his former dialogue coach brian peck 
who is no relation to um, Bell's former co-star Josh Peck. I think it's great they ran a record of that because I was about to be like, wait, hold on a second, what? <laughs> Peck, who is now 63 years of age, spent 16 months in prison in 2004 after being convicted of committing a lewd, a lewd act against a child, an oral copulation of a person under 16 who was previously unnamed. That is gross. Like, what is going on? Is there no rules set in place? Why are we not doing background checks for creeps? Because they definitely do exist. I, I don't like the idea of a child star. I don't like the, I feel like, the, yes, there are child stars who have come out on the other end where they're actually decent and they look healthy and cool, like Zendaya, for instance. But I can't name a lot. I can't, because then we have the old Orlando Blooms. No, thank you. Absolutely. Then we have the Amanda Bynes. And I don't blame them. You have so much pressures. You witness so many things at a young age. You are brainwashed. You are told that if you do this, you do that, then we're going to help your career. And of course, every kid wants to be on TV and celebrated. Like, imagine seeing yourself um, on magazines and really living it up. Like, and kids coming up to you like, oh my God, I love you, I'm a fan. Like, that will get me gassed. Don't get it twisted. Like, at the age of 13, 14, 15, 16, like, I'll be so gassed. Even at the age of 30, I'll be so, I'll be, I'll be loving it. I'm not going to lie. But I do think there's certain, there's certain things that kids shouldn't have to witness. I, I think it's wrong. And I think that as much as we can go ahead and blame people on set, um we need to blame parents as well you know who just let their kids go like no i i wouldn't feel comfortable and it's not just because there's a bunch of guys around like even women are able to commit such heinous crimes as well but i'm saying i wouldn't feel comfortable for me personally to leave my kids on set for however many hours by the way filming and god knows doing what it just doesn't make me feel good but of course parents not all of them the ones who are not fit to be parents will just let their kids let their kids do absolutely whatever for the sake of a check because a lot of the kids weren't even able to spend their own money why are we not doing background checks even with love is blind like there are so many sociopaths psychopaths manipulators why are you not doing background checks girl like yes they make for great tv but girl <sighs> have you guys seen the chaos that is love is blind the latest season i think late season six We need safer environments where it's not toxic. I shouldn't be going to, onto set and see, witnessing things and seeing people have massages and just people acting inappropriately. I think it says a lot about you. And for me personally, I see through a lot of BS and I'm calling a lot of what Dan Shana has to say, which we'll go ahead and talk about later, pure BS because you are the professional, you are the grown adult, you were the ones that maybe not employed everyone, but employed quite a, few, a fair few you know you've worked with thousands and thousands of people upon being on tv from the late 90s up until the 2000s you had your run and boy was it a good run it was two decades quiet on set sees some show writers and staffers as well as former child stars and their parents detailing allegations including harassment discrimination and abuse against schneider who's 58 years old as well as others included two sex offenders who were both convicted while working on nickelodeon shows while Schneider, who, do who Nickelodeon announced they were parting with in 2018, does not appear in the documentary, there are statements attributed to him responding to various allegations shown throughout. Leon Fris Frierson, I think, a former cast member of the show All That, which ran from 1994 to 2005, said in the series' first episode, which charts the beginning of Schneider's time at Nickelodeon, that it was in our best interest to go with the flow. The documentary's second episode then features Friesen's, I can't pronounce her name, former co-stars Giovanni Samuels, Brian Christopher, Hearn and Kyle Sullivan, the latter of whom called the set dysfunctional, adding the show was full of these uncomfortable sketches. I think Dan got a kick out of walking the line with that. I definitely do agree with that. I think it's also really weird because I heavily watch Victoria's, I watch iCarly, and there was a lot of like foot jokes. If you have a fetish, have your fetish in peace. Um, there are certain fetishes and kinks that I feel like just go way too far. I'm not necessarily saying feet is one of them, but like people are saying stuff like, oh, you shouldn't have you shouldn't kink shame babe i just did what are you going to do respectfully like i'm sorry there, there are generally some kinks where it's like you guys are wild you're a different breed <laughs> um but yeah dan shana definitely had a foot fetish why am i seeing cat valentine's feet up on my why am i seeing people's feet like back it up baby and when i was young i even found that uncomfortable i never laughed at that part i never thought oh my god her feet is on the screen <laughs> no this is kids tv for kids on a kids network how would these jokes even approve just the part that i want to know like did they get in the writer's room and just thought like you know what let's really go for it describing the racial dynamics on set samuel said she felt like the token black girl while hern 
alleged Schneider had a close relationship with some of the white girls. Sorry, 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 some of the white kids. Said that he didn't feel close to him at all. That is such a, I feel like it's a universal experience. I feel like, especially if you are like, the only black girl on set you feel i'm so sorry you just feel different even when it comes to like being the only black girl in a white squad or friendship group like you just feel different you know and it, it's so sad because like we're all human beings but we we generally like i don't know I, I hate the idea of being reminded that i'm not like these people like i feel like i'm not i'm not doing a good job of explaining it but if you know then comment down below if you have any experiences like that because it sucks there's been times where I felt like the token black girl. I'm like, bitch, where the other ones at? Where, where's, where's my brothers, my sisters? Where's everybody? And do you remember when I exposed Dote back in 2018? You had to be around for that. Like, why are you having one or two black girls? If anything, like biracial girls. And it's like, excuse me, there's plenty of people that I can personally nominate for you to have on your on your, on your trips. Like, where are the black people at? Where they at though? I don't like that feeling. I don't like the idea of feeling like an outcast, you know? So I really do resonate with that very much. So Han said he remembers being brought to tears after being told the skin tone of a sketch character he was playing called Lil Fetus should be charcoal. And also recalled being covered in peanut butter, which was then licked off by dogs during one of the shows on Air Dares segment, which cast members describe as traumatic. My goodness, I'm not coming back. Oh girl, I'm not coming back. Oh Jesus Christ, the things these people must have witnessed, like, I don't think therapy can even save them. Can they even afford therapy? Like, do they still got it like that? Therapy is not cheap. Therapy is not cheap at all, you know? And it's not gonna take one or two lessons to just help with the trauma that you, you're dealing with and you're going through. Like, it's gonna take some years for a lot of people. I hope they're all compensating that way. I know Dan Shana keeps saying, you know, I wish I can reach out. No, but you can compensate them. You know, money isn't gonna solve everything, but girl, I want some, give me some change. Pay up. There are ways, in my opinion, where you can actually show a little bit of support. But it doesn't mean you're gonna be buying them with your kindness. Just pay up, bitch. <laughs> with all that thing that you put me through, you better pay up. How, how am I slavering peanut butter on my face for dogs to come lick in it? Are you stupid? Even my dog that I love, it's not happening. It is absolutely not happening. Like, it's the audacity for me. I'm black, and so what? I'm still talented, point blank, period. Like, I hate when people make it, like, someone's entire personality trait. It's like, bro, I'm black, okay, cool, but I'm super duper talented, and low-key better than some of the actors on set. Now what? Karen Finley Thompson, a former editor on all that alleged that um, Dan Schneider and Amanda Bynes, who joined the show's cast and also got her own spin-off, The Amanda Bynes Show, had a close relationship that included an instance in which Miss Thompson said she saw Bynes massaging Schneider's shoulders. Okay, I'm not going to blame Amanda Bynes for this because she was simply a child. Plenty of videos I've seen of them where their interactions just seem very off um, and very, very smiley. I think you can smile, you know, and love the fact that, hey, my boss made me this superstar and helped. I don't want to say made me because Amanda Bynes had her own personality and just very bubbly and just very, very, very talented, you know. But of course, the machine behind her would technically be, you know, um, a Dan Schneider, but there's even an... A video where they're both in a hot tub together why are you in a hot tub with why are you in a hot tub with a, a little girl like i just don't understand that babes also where her parents at amanda Bynes situation i saw her on tiktok um and i really do wish her the best and i really do hope that she's actually okay but she doesn't look okay and that's me being very respectful by the way i can only assume it's gonna take many years of therapy to get to a place of sanity again because if i was her i'd be completely insane i actually understand child stars who go crazy I think that, you know, it it's bound to happen. The people who are supposed to protect you, like the adults, specifically your parents, don't show up for you, but show up to receive the check. Cha-ching, ching. I believe that. I really do believe that they had a close relationship. I do believe that Amanda, Amanda Bynes probably felt that Dan Schneider was like a father figure for her and probably felt like he was God. You know, to kids, when you see someone who's making your dreams a reality, like that, like you see them as godlike, you know, in a way. The documentary alleges that the relationship between the pair soured when Dan Schneider involved himself in Amanda Bynes' failed effort to emancipate herself from her parents. Let's get on to what Dan Schneider had to say. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth, shall we? Me, me. Guys, this... <laughs> <laughs> you guys better like comment and subscribe you know you guys are better like comment and subscribe because who else do you know that's gonna go ahead and do some horse noises dan shanda is one ugly man i'm gonna say it and i'm gonna say it with chess and you know what i know you shouldn't say that you shouldn't cuss people out with their looks and stuff but when you're a monster it's like how else can i describe you what other adjectives do you want me to use to describe you who looks at absolute state the beard is not bearding um i will say though he still has a, a full head of hair at 58 not saying that your hair should be gone by 58 to be fair though prince williams let me stop 
he's basically apologizing do we believe it you can you can um but i would not get manipulated i i would not get manipulated into thinking that this person has changed and truly understood where they've gone wrong i think it's a little bit too late in the words of jojo um and i don't mean siwa i just feel as though if you were generally sorry and you, we have to understand this is a grown ass adult okay you're 58 years of age now at the time you would have been still an adult so um i'm not buying it i feel like if you truly felt there was something wrong with your actions you would have been you wouldn't have continued doing it you wouldn't have continued to um take part in certain things and just act like a creep i feel like people do kind of give a slap on the wrist to creepy people and it's like i'm never gonna do that i feel very uncomfortable hearing about creepy behaviors i don't look at kids and and feel a certain type of way i just think like you, people need to people need to draw a line we need to have boundaries um it's not something that should be taught it's something that you should just know point blank period i don't think i've ever had a lesson in school to do with keeping away from kids because you just know to keep away from kids and that's why my my foot is heavy on james charles neck because bitch oh i'm not even gonna get into that do better do better like <laughs> Anyways, um, Dan Shannon addresses regretful Nickelodeon behavior, saying, I owe some pretty strong apologies. Okay, go. Cool. The Investigation Discovery documentary saw former Nickelodeon star Drake Bell come forward with an alleged sexual abuse, which he says he suffered at age 15. Now, listen, Drake Bell, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, you know? But you have issues of your own, and I guess it's true, hurt people hurt people. Um you have severe issues of your own uh he was convicted of very heinous things and criminal activity and behavior you know what i mean you've got some demons you're dealing with too um to be quite frank with you i'm all here for somebody sharing their experience and sharing their story and you know but shouldn't he be in jail like real talk like if i'm not if one plus one is two and two plus two is four, why am I getting an odd number right now? Something's not adding up. Shouldn't you be behind bars? In the words of Akon, please don't let him out, no. no but anyways, um, he sat his ass on the chair and he decided to share his story and there's so much power in vocalizing your truth and sharing your story. But we have to also, that's not me trying to say that I have forgotten about what it is that Drake Bell did because boy, you don't forget something like that, all right? That was, that was big news, I think back in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but don't quote me on that so um dan schneider basically said that watching the documentary was very difficult as he faced his past behaviors some of which are embarrassing and that i regret i definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology i hate that anybody worked for me and didn't have a good time he would let the pressure of doing 40 episodes or more a year get to him which a good boss should never do he continued by saying, I would snap at people sometimes. I would be snarky when I could have given them a nicer answer. I would not give people the time they needed. I would be in too big a hurry to get onto the next thing I had to do. Watching that documentary, there were so many times I wanted to pick up the phone and call some of the people and say, I'm so sorry. And let's talk about it. Well, first and foremost, if you're calling my phone, well, I probably won't have the same number from like 10, 20 years ago. Let's just be real. Um, actually, no, I would because I feel like I haven't changed my number. I'm not the type of person who changes my number like every five years. Girl, who am I running away from? Um, anyways, um, if you call my phone, bitch, I'm not going to lie. Like that is going to trigger me, especially if I'm actively in therapy and I'm actually trying to heal and or maybe I've healed and gone to a place where I'm like, I'm, I'm content with everything and you know i still have my future to look forward to do you know what i mean like i don't want dan shana flipping calling me or anyone from his team calling me like back the flip up and i most importantly won't see it as genuine and i'm such a nice person where i typically am forgiving uh sometimes at times where i probably shouldn't be but that's a lesson learned um but even me somebody who is willing to forgive a lot of things if i'm facing trauma on set day in day out I don't know if I can forgive such a thing because that will play in my mind day to day and it would affect relationships and would affect the way I treat other people. Is it really regretful? Seeing the hurt in some people's eyes made me feel awful and regretful and sorry. When Drake and I talked and he told me what had happened, I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. I'm here for you, he told Drake Bell. It was wrong. I was wrong that I ever put anyone in a position, in that position I was wrong to do. It, I would never do it today. Well, let's be very clear. A lot of the things that he's been accused of and a lot of things that's been proven, let's be honest, allegedly, um, 
you can never it can never run in big big 2024 are you dumb you to do all those feet jokes on a kid's show you would be slated and no way would a show like victorious even be renewed for another season like whilst victorious is that show and was very funny and had its concept and its own little little thing about it let's be honest feet jokes on a kid's show mm -mm -mm. it's no it's no bueno times were different back then and that's not me trying to i'm never gonna defend him especially when you look like that and built like that hell no like respectfully in fact there is no respect the respect left the door once you started touching kids and just being a weirdo like ugh. it sounds like i'm being quite harsh in this video but like i just don't understand why he's not behind bars too he took his ass cheeks and decided to sit down on the podcast like that's bold for me i haven't seen that channel in a long time the fact that he went on the podcast with tebow tebow no offense or anything could be a great guy again black don't crack he looks amazing i mean it will start cracking black don't crack but it will start cracking when you when you start hanging out with people you shouldn't be hanging out with and doing things you shouldn't be doing but anyways um you know tebow we don't technically check for him and if we do check for him it's because he was that guy like carly who was funny and you know that guy um so dan schneider knew exactly what he was doing by going to tebow especially because tebow was once upon a time an employee of his and he probably did treat tebow pretty good but the thing is dan schneider wasn't technically after the adults he was after the kiddies so that's what Tebow needs to understand. Also, if you've watched the, um, the interview with Tebow, um, then you would know that Tebow was a bit too nice in that video. And I don't know, I, I just don't know um, if I agree with that. I don't know if I even would have Dan Schneider on a podcast of mine. I wouldn't feel comfortable. Um, I definitely would ask a lot more better questions than Tebow did ask, but you know, I, I still would ask some of the similar ones that he asked too. So he didn't do an awful job. It's just, I think his approach was a bit too nice because he once upon a time had a relationship with him and he, you know, Dan Schneider was not preying upon you. You know, Dan Schneider was not even targeting you or, you know, um, I did, I do think he gave him quite a lot of grace. I guess he's a better person than me. Um, but yeah, all in all, I do think it could have been a lot more shorter, the actual interview, if you've listened to it. What do you guys think about this whole situation? Where are you at? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. I'm going to be checking the comments. And if there's any other video you guys want to see from me, then please do let me know down below in the comments. And yes, I'll catch you guys real soon for a brand new video. Bye!